Okay, so a quick video on how impurities in hydrocarbons can lead to acid rain. So we're just going to talk about what this word impurities means. So if something is a pure substance, so if something is a pure substance, it means it only contains one type of substance, right? Pure water only contains water. So if you had a pure hydrocarbon like um, octane, it would only contain octane. But if you've got something that is impure, or it has impurities in it, it means it has got other things in it. So if it's got impurities, it means it's not only made of one type of substance. And unfortunately, a lot of hydrocarbons contain sulfur as an impurity. And so when they contain sulfur, as an impurity, when you combust the hydrocarbons, remember combustion is when you're reacting them with oxygen. So when you combust hydrocarbons, if they have sulfur in them as an impurity, you're talking you've got sulfur, you've got lots of oxygen because of the combustion requires oxygen and you've got heat. And then so sulfur and oxygen ends up producing SO2, sulfur dioxide, which is a gas. I'm just gonna show you how that can lead to acid rain. So I've got a little model here, which hopefully you can see. Um, so it's not a perfect model, but I'll explain it. So I've got my lake. So lovely, beautiful lake here. Um, I've got my sky and I've got some clouds, just cotton wool, right? Um, cotton wool with apparently a bit of plasticine stuck in the bottom. Okay. So, I've got my clouds. It's not a perfect model because it's upside down, but that will make more sense in a minute. So, clouds obviously need some water. So, let's fill up my. So, add some water to clouds. Right. So, this is distilled water. So, totally pure. Only thing in it is. Um, H2O, right, so it's not tap water, and so and that is distilled water too. So I need to burn some fuel with some impurities. So here's my fuel. So I've got a bunch of matches, and to make sure there's impurities there, um, the end's been dipped in sulfur. So this is like my factories, burning coal, those sorts of things. Um, so I've got my clouds, and I get the models upside down because the factories are going to be in the sky and the clouds are on the ground, but you know, gravity, can't ignore it. So, got to work with what I've got. So, the idea is I'm going to set all my factories on fire. Sorry, I'm not going to set the factories on fire. I'm going to burn the hydrocarbons, like the coal and whatnot, that, to represent what the factories would be doing. And then, I'm going to seal that in there. So, this is why it has to be upside down. I'm trying to do it without burning my hands. And then so all of those gases that were in there are now trapped in my little model and are being dissolved in the water that's in the clouds. So yeah, there's some carbon dioxide in there, but because of the sulfur, so if you remember, there was sulfur in there as an impurity, the sulfur reacted with the oxygen and it's formed sulfur dioxide. So that sulfur dioxide is now in there and it now stinks in this classroom. Really sulfury smell. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that there for a minute. And what is actually happening is that sulfur dioxide, SO2, excuse the writing because I haven't got anything to rest on. So SO2 was sulfur dioxide, which is a gas. And when it comes into contact with the clouds, which obviously are made of H2O, it dissolves. And when sulfur dioxide dissolves in the water, it makes H2SO4, which is aqueous. And that, you may recognize, is sulfuric acid. So we started off with sulfur as our impurity. When we burnt the fuel, the sulfur reacted with the oxygen and made sulfur dioxide. That then went into the sky, dissolved in the water in the clouds and has made sulfuric acid. So if I come back 
and hopefully I'll come back to the experiment. Hopefully that's had long enough to work now. Um, so I've got my lake here. So I'm gonna. This is just universal indicator. So I'm gonna chuck some universal indicator into my lake, and you can see it's green. So neutral. Um, so I've got my green lake. Let's take this out. Okay, so get rid of some of that. And then let's get my clouds. And then I can should be able to make my clouds rain into my lake by squeezing them. And so hopefully you can see that the lake's turned acidic. Um, bear with me, I didn't think this through. It's going to be 10 seconds, just going to go and rinse all that acid off my hands. I might edit this out with the magic of editing. I might not. That's a lie. We all know I'm not going to edit that out. Right. So, issues with acid rain. Um... So, problems that acid rain can cause, acid rain. So, when it's actually falling as acid rain, it can damage plants and trees. So, damage plants and trees, like destroy their leaves and those sorts of things. Um, I should, should add, this acid rain is like rain that is slightly acidic. It's not... Like it doesn't fall on your head and then dissolve you, right? It's not like you'd be walking through acid rain with an umbrella and then the umbrella would have loads of holes in it. You're talking it is very slightly acidic, but it's that constant exposure to that low acidity that does this. So acid rain, so it can damage trees. Um, it can turn soil acidic. So it can make soil acidic. And if soil is acidic, it affects the growth of plants, crops, those sorts of things. Um, obviously, all that water then flows into rivers and lakes. So if it makes lakes acidic, it can... This is really difficult to write. It can damage aquatic life. So plants or marine life get damaged because the lakes and the rivers become acidic. And then it can also weather buildings. So if you've got a lot of buildings that are made of limestone, um, limestone is calcium carbonate, that reacts with acid. So it speeds up the weathering of buildings. So if you, I mean, you can Google this. If you Google, in, in particular, like churches, right, where they've got those like stone, limestone gargoyles or statues or those sorts of things, um, there are some pretty brutal images of all this loving artwork that survived for like 500 years when we did the Industrial Revolution. Much more acidic things, much more acidic rain because of all the burning hydrocarbons. And it's just really sped up the, the weathering of these things. So, um, you probably hear the caretakers outside the school now. Um, they're just walking past with a massive sheet of some sort of metal. Um, right, so in summary for all this, we have sulfur in our hydrocarbons as an impurity. When we combust the hydrocarbons, it reacts with the oxygen to make sulfur dioxide. That then dissolves in the water to make sulfuric acid, h 2 SO4, and when that falls as acid rain, it damages trees, makes soil acidic and affects plant growth, turns lakes acidic and damages aquatic marine life, and it can speed up the weathering of buildings. Um, hopefully that's cleared that up.